Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. On tap is what should be a pretty good matchup between the New York Jets and the Cleveland Browns. So with that, let's get up to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland for the call. We welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Just off the shores of Lake Erie, we are at First Energy Stadium in a city aptly named after its founder, Moses Cleveland, way back in 1796. This was the scene a few minutes ago. The dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel. And they're ready to go as they get set to match up with the New York Jets. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Here comes Tyrod Taylor bringing out the Cleveland offense. And the numbers for Taylor in his first start, oh, not good. 15 of 40, 197 yards. Now, he did add 77 yards on the ground. But, hey, through all that, they tied Pittsburgh. Yeah, when you're 1-31 the last two years, I guess you take it. But for him, playing in some adverse weather conditions, there's some throws I know he would love to have back. Had Josh Gordon open a couple of times, couldn't hit him. But you and I both know it won't take long if it hasn't already started to happen. Those chants of Baker, Baker, Baker. Baker. <laughs> they will be getting started. But a good point in Tyrod's defense. The weather. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Steve McClendon. With a great push up front, he picks up the sack and a loss of eight. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Ready. 319. <laughs> From the shotgun, it's Taylor. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Morris Claiborne. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. Let's go. Let's go. Interception, baby. Let's go. Now the Jet offense about to take over as they head out onto the field. After the interception, here's Darnold. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. The Jets and Browns, two cellar dwellers from a year ago, and they did meet in that season, week five, in Cleveland. Miles Garrett, it was his NFL debut. He got two sacks, but it was former Brown Josh McCown throwing two second-half touchdown passes to lead the Jets to the victory. And every time I hear about the Jets and Browns playing, you know what I think about? The first ever Monday night football game, the Jets at the Browns, Cleveland won, I believe it was 1970. It was indeed. I just happen to have the note here. I don't know this off the top of my head, but September 21st, 1970. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Now a first carry for the former Cleveland Brown, Isaiah Crowell. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. 
doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Throwing here on third down, Darnold. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. And Myers able to knock it through. And the Jets hit the board first. It's 3-0. They got the interception, but very little movement after. And that forces him to settle for three. And it, it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does. But we got to give a lot of credit where it's due. And that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. This is what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire. And they did, holding them to a field goal. now converted on the field goal try now he's on to kick it away this is taken about seven yards deep and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line Tyrod Taylor now gears up to lead his offense again and he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball yeah and you know the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones the ones that really know how to lead their team they tell them that's on me that's my bad but let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. The first carry for a former 49er and also a former Buckeye. It's Carlos Hyde. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. extends this drive. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. there on first. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Taylor going to run the option right. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. 
but when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Here's Taylor. Looking left side, that's caught by Landry. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. A gain of six there on first. was Buster screened to knock it away. And trying to give a lift to this offense today will be the Duke, the former Kane, Duke Johnson. Comes from a great tradition of runners at Miami of Florida. He's one of the best ones we've seen in recent years. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment, defense. So they got him coming up from his linebacker spot. And sometimes the position designation really doesn't matter. If you creep up to the line of scrimmage, you just have to look for the football. Make sure it moves before you do. Here's a first and ten now after they successfully drew him off sides. From the gun, it's Taylor. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. And a look now at how the Jets line up defensively. I want to highlight the back end of this defense and especially focus in on the safety duo of Jamal Adams and Marcus May. Adams, their first round pick. May, their second round pick. And both had tremendous rookie seasons. Both can play free safety or strong safety. I call them mirrors. What one is doing, the other is doing the opposite. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Taylor will throw again. And just shutting him off there. Going right side here, and that's complete. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender. Made him what do you think, mean by that? Broke yeah, up. he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then it curls back inside for the completion. First red zone opportunity for the Browns thus far. First and 10 at the 19. Ready. Three, 19. <laughs> They'll give the high. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Early down stuffs to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Taylor. 
steps away to his left. He may try and run. Taylor hit. He lost the football. And it's scooped up by the Jets. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So a first corner fumble in the rain. And this isn't supposed to let up. They've had flash flood warnings just west of here. So they better get used to this. And it's hard to do real early in the game because you're so amped up and you're trying to do so much. You've got to get used to it, though. You've got to focus in on the ball. Make sure you're taking care of it. That one cost them. Now the Jets offense gets ready to head back on the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way. That doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. They begin with a run by Cornell. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he can even get started. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll be second and 12. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. the 15 to the 17 yard line two yards on the carry there and it's going to lead him to third down one thing to keep in mind partner especially the second half when you've got a running back of this size of these dimensions i can just tell you attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half maybe not so much in the second half and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Hey, go down, go down. Hurry up, here we go. Three, ah! Out of the shotgun, here's Donald. It's caught by Quincy Anunua. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. Sometimes it seems like a tough world out there. Many thought Sam Darnold would go number one overall to the Browns, and he fell to number three to the New York Jets. I think he fell to a great situation. He gets to go to New York with a rebuilding team, take over the job right then and there. And while many were expecting Broadway Baker Mayfield, instead they got sudden Sam Darnold, and I think the Jets fans are going to be very happy to have him. First down, Darnold. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, you take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Crowell, and he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. A 
first down carry now for Crowell. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. across the 50 into Browns territory. It's a five-yard game, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The Jets on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Here's again to Crowell. Call it no game that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. On every snap, the defense is trying to establish who they are, but on third and short, that's really when you put it out there and tell people who you are, and that's exactly what they did. For the offense, they're looking at their offensive line and saying, guys, where are you? We need you on those plays. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon with you. It's the Jets in possession as we begin quarter number two here. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. Fourth down, here's Lachlan Edwards to punt it. And the Browns getting set to go. And job one here, Charles, just keep possession of the football. Two drives, two turnovers to this point. You're exactly right, Doctor. Hippocratic oath, first do no harm. And right now, they're harming themselves on offense. I like that. No one is mistaking me for a doctor, though. But thank you, Dr. Davis. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Now that's a gain of six on the first down run. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game. Got to make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Now Taylor to throw on second down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. They were searching for the tight end, Darren Fells. Third down here. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Taylor operating from the gun. The attempt on the dive, and he has it. What a catch. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They do get 12, but they'll be marked short. And that leads to a fourth down. Well, that's just simply not right. To make that kind of a catch, 
that spectacular and not get a first down out of it? I guess he could put it on his personal highlight reel, however. Yeah, he'll get the catch, he'll get the yardage, but he doesn't get what he really wants. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on the punt. Back deep here, Andre Roberts. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. So out now come the Jets. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Play fake here on first down. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Christian Kirksey, he's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest ones, maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Darnold now to throw. That's complete over the middle to Anderson. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The Jets on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 17. All right, here we go. Three, 19. Darnold from the gun. Dumps off to Powell. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. Call it a three-yard game. And that'll bring up fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, standing just outside his own goal line. Take it at the 37. And a seven-yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And the Browns will take over first and 10. A chance for us here to discuss Jarvis Landry. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us. But sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far just a single catch in this game. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and 10. Taylor will throw. And incomplete there all picked off that's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with but it's second down well we got a second here to look back to week one a handful of nice road wins the biggest surprise no doubt cd how about tampa bay winning at new orleans yeah that was a big one because i'm not sure how many people really expected that we looked at the schedule in preseason and thought oh my god for tampa at new orleans at home for philadelphia home for pittsburgh i figured an 0 three start if they won one of them, it would be great. Well, they got it on Sunday, winning at New Orleans. Washington at Arizona, Cincinnati at Indianapolis, Kansas City at the Chargers. All of them had big wins in week one. 
But didn't you think Chicago was going to pull it oh, out? Oh, that was going to be a stunner. And if Chicago and the Saints had won, some elimination pools wouldn't have had many people left. Yeah, but Aaron Rodgers showed up, and poor Chicago went home with an L. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. To throw is Taylor. From the gun, he'll throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. Here's Britton Colquitt now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. Getting set to go here, Isaiah Crowell in the offense. Trot back out there. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going. But we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series. So those surface tablets come into play. Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. <laughs> now a handoff to Crowell. And he powers his way up past the third. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Set it down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. Six there on first. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That's good for a Jet first down, a gain of 13. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 44-yard line. Hang on now. Green, 39. Now it's Green, Crowell. He can't bring him down. The weight room does work. And down to the 36-yard line here. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Here we go now. 
Here's Darnold now on second down. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Robbie Anderson, the man he was looking for. And it's third and short. Defensively, celebration time because they finally forced an incompletion. He was perfect throwing the ball to that point. Yeah, but from his viewpoint, they didn't force the incompletion. He just missed. That's how hot he is right now. And that's how he wants to continue to throw the ball. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. All right, here we go. Ah! The shotgun snap for Darnold. And he's got a new one. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. Seven yards on the quick slant and a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. This quarterback now nearly perfect. Nine of ten in this first half. It's first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. There's some space here. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. shine the 20 in the red zone that catch good for only a yard and it'll be third down and partner i think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right got the completion but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league so even though he caught it couldn't turn it into much more The Jets on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. Here we go now. Three, 19. Darnold. Now this is brought in by Pryor. And he gets this down to the 18, good enough for a first down. And they keep those sticks moving forward that time with a gain of three. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And there was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. First red zone opportunity now for the Jets. They have a first and 10 at the 18. Set, green, 39. They go back to the ground now with Corral. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Tackle made there by Miles Garrett. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against them. Jets on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and ten. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Ah! Now Darnold. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that's going to bring up the fourth down. Two minutes to play here in the first half. More from Cleveland after this.
We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime need to give the, Need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Myers able to knock it through. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It's not like you're going negative on me, I was. Partner. I was. Sounds like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. On the return, Jabril Peppers. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Jarvis Landry and company heading back onto the field now. They've got to find a way to get him more involved in this game plan. Down here in the second quarter, he doesn't even have a catch. And don't think they're not hearing about it in the huddle and on the sidelines. And we often think of wide receivers at times being disruptive. It's just that they know their talents and they know the type of plays they can make and they can make big ones. They want the ball to help their team. Yeah, you got to think he's going to want the ball more. One target, no catches. Take him down at the 31-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Here's Taylor to throw on second down. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Buster Screen. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. When a team's turned it over three times in the first half, we just look at the offense and say, guys, what are you doing? But instead, we really should be looking at the defense. They've created the takeaways. Two interceptions, one cause fumble. They played awfully well swarming to the ball here in the first half. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> After the interception, here's Darnold throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Quincy Anunwa that time, and now it's second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Set, green. They'll run it now out of the gun. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. Partner, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for them. Show them that you're supposed to get the football. Ah! 
Darnold on first down. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by the Michigan man, Jabril Peppers. The 40. Pass the 20. 10. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns defense has a touchdown. What you just saw there, first round talent, second year, even more success. A pick six for a touchdown. A great play. And it's tough for these guys, you've told me before, to adjust in the secondary as a first year guy. So that sophomore season is big for them. They really start to expand the playbook for them even more. Sometimes they dumb it down a little bit to make them comfortable year one. By year two, they should have all the nuances. And now they've adjusted to the speed of NFL play as well. Showed right there. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. A good hold in these wet conditions. The point after is up and good. And that will give them the lead here as we get on towards halftime. So the defense creating some points. Not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And the Jets set to take the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Second down, Darnold. Over the middle, complete. That's Anderson. And prior to this third and two play, we're going to get a timeout call. As it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. The Jets on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This time they face a third and two. Here's Darnold. And a diving grab. I think he got that, yes. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. They'll fake the handoff. Now Darnold. Incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back and they're not playing receiver. 
receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as they'll try to get three before half. This from 54 yards away. So we have reached halftime here in Cleveland with the Browns on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL and give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach. Thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Andre Roberts now to return it. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The Jets' offense now works their way back onto the field. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. is running back and he's got it complete a really nice gain of 25 yards so many times you hear today's nfl described as a space game get your best players into space with the football in their hands that's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner get him out in the flat and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 43. Here we go now. Green, 39. 
to throw is Darnold. He hits Jermaine Kurz. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. A gain of six there on first. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Back to throw, Darnold. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? The Jets on third down, five out of nine thus far. Here it's third and two. Here we go. On the run, it's Corral. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Hurry up. Here we go. Green. On second and ten, Darnold. And this is caught at the eight. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. A very solid gain of 27. Partners, a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. So that'll back him up five. Still first down. The delay of game, a costly one, as they're backed up five for first and goal. Let's go! After the penalty, it's Crowell. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Give him two yards on that one, second and goal now. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And yeah, now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? Right, here we go. Three, nine, to throw on second down is Darnold. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. 
Jermaine Kurz from six yards away. And the Jets are able to strike for six. So it goes for a rookie quarterback. He had the INT earlier in this first half, but he bounces back with a touchdown pass. And you have to like the mental acumen, the toughness, the fortitude of him, because oftentimes for a rookie, you throw an interception early, you're taken right out of the game, or mentally, you check out a little bit. Give him a lot of credit for bouncing back. The offense going to stay on the field as they will line up and go for two. Tight end right. Watch tight. Tight end right. All right, here we go. Three nineteen. Three now whistles 19. come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. False start. Offense. Now remember, still time. They can elect to kick it now from back at the 20. You have to know what you have mentally from your kicker because the extra points have stressed these guys out all across the league. But I think at this stage of the game, I tried him out there and try it from the 20. So the Jet offense staying on the field. They're going to go for two. Hey. Hey, here we go now. Green three. They're going to try and run here. And he is not going to make it to the goal line. So the defense holds. And this remains a five-point game. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most half? Of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. They'll try to fire up the running game with high. And they'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Let's talk about football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. On second down, here's Taylor. And that one was nearly picked. Not sure he was accounting for the free safety. That brings up third down. I think someone's going to get into QB ones here when he gets to the sideline. Already throwing an interception. That one should have been picked. Look, let's just be honest about it. That'd be the second person in his ear because he's hearing it in the huddle right now. Not the start to the game he wanted. Like you said, the pick on the opening drive, second drive, not much better. The Browns on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and four. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. That's in Joker over the middle. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Taylor able to find his big tight end in Joku for the Cleveland first down. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route. But he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. This one for about four up to the 40. 
have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. They run it again with nine. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Call it a loss of two on the play. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. The Browns on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and eight. Got to frustrate him a little bit because they nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. To able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. This is taken at the 23. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Jets will take over first and 10. And New York set to take the field. This is Crowell. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. They'll run it again with Crowell. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. midfield and inside the 45. Give him 12 yards there and the Jets have a first. And that's the big fella's MO right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 43. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Brought down that time by Christian Kirksey. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth so far. Four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Try the air now with Darnold. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass.
The Jets on third down. They're hitting at 60%. Six out of ten thus far. This is third and eight. the shotgun. Here's Darnold. And he comes back with one complete. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. So much about offense is what we call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Now stopped him in his tracks. It's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. So without making excuses, you have to figure that this rain has had an impact now on both of his missed field goals. It's one of those situations really difficult to practice for and tough to prepare yourself against. It's just a whole different animal kicking in the rain, and we've really seen him struggle. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here. They can go ahead and do it. And because they couldn't hit the long field goal, they are set up nicely offensively at the 41, first and 10. Ready, flag, 32. <laughs> From the gun, it's Taylor. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. From the gun, Taylor. That is caught by the former Gator, Antonio Callaway. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11 yard pickup. Taylor now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. Now it's Taylor. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Fifteen more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Again, it's high. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Darren Lee there to get him down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. The Browns on third down. Just one for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Ready. Three, <laughs> Operating from the gun. Taylor. Buying time to his left. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. Taylor able to use those legs of his to pick up a first. 
looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he's trying to force a lot of throws into some windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. He had no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. Taylor now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's the Browns with a deficit they're trailing, but with the football here to start the fourth. Tim Carey for Hyde, and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a four-yard pickup, and that is going to set up a third and one. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. The Browns on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Now Taylor to throw underneath for Johnson. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to make it fourth down. Well, they try to swing it out left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Ready, back, for two. <laughs> Gotta try it here, he's back to throw. Turn the play on, caught. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pickup through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet and what I would find, Plays have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need. And that's exactly what they got done. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. They come out here in the eye. They'll run for it with Hyde. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Here in the fourth quarter. 
Second effort there. He was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that's a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. Here's Taylor. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. Well, that decision to me was all about pulling up the chart. You know, that, that beautiful chart that tells you when to go for two, when love to go that for chart. one. I do <laughs> love it. It helps you with your decision-making during heated times. And just look at it right here in this part, point of the game. Go for two. Try to make it a field goal difference. But now just up one makes the rest of this fourth quarter a little more interesting. Yeah, they followed the chart. They just didn't get the two points on the board, did they? Nope. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The New York set to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Hang on, now. on first down, Darnold. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Right, here we go. Three, 19. Second down and 10, Darnold. And his throw is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Jermaine Curse. And now it's third down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but it took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. Hey, 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 hey. Hurry up, here we go. Three, the pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Powell. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They'll give him eight on the play, and it'll be fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch. Hands first and ten. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They go play action here on first down. He's got a man wide open. It's Landry. And he's brought down after a good game. A good pickup there, a 22. 
I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. Trying to wind down some clock with Hyde. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. Great time there to come up with his longest run of the night. We just saw it. Leads to a lot of satisfaction because if they're able to hang on and win this game, you know what else will happen in the locker room after this? What's that? Head coaches step up and go, great job, guys. Because of that, come in a little bit later tomorrow. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45 yard line. Now Taylor. Room here to run. Flush to his right. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. How many times have we seen this late in the fourth quarter? Because you know the pass rush is getting after him, and they get upfield, get that great push, and what do they create? Space, and he takes off. He throws it away. Yeah, very smart play right there. Pocket collapsing around him. Love the way he moved around a little bit and avoided the sack. Taylor incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Play action. Now Taylor. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. The Browns on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. Here it's third and two. Three, three, nineteen. Three, <laughs> They'll run it. Here's Hyde. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Three yards there. Good enough to keep the drive moving. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what we said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. what you want on a first down run call it eight yards and it's second and two so the solid run on first and i would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play no it's all in your quarterback now he's got to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock unless of course you're playing a video game you're trying to run it up on your friend <laughs> nice touch cold-blooded too Complete. Jarvis Landry, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. 
hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. The Browns on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This time they face a third and two. Taylor now operating from the goal. And that's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And the 10-year bet knocks it through the goalpost. And that'll move their lead up to four now. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Uh, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And we shift our focus to Isaiah Crowell. And as the numbers show, he really wasn't in the mix at the beginning, but they've got him in the rotation now, and it's proved a good move. And that's what happens when you're a good player. There's a lot more attention drawn to you and it's obvious that they had him in their game plan on defense, not letting him get off to a good start, but he's found a way so far here in the second half. Here we go. Green, 39. On first and 10, Darnold. He finds an opening past the 40. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. A good pick up there of 20 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball in the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Set! Blue landed! Blue Darnold on first down. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. All right, here we go. A shotgun snap for Donald. Complete out right to Kurz. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Third down, Donald dumps off to Powell. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. It's a nice job hitting him on the angle route there, coming out of the backfield, cutting sharply across the middle. And that's good timing between the quarterback and his receiver. Effective third down play to move the chains. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 43. Set! Blue landed! Darn the throw again. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete. 
incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss up 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Let's go! Back to the air, Darnold on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Now, he's been a busy man out of the backfield. They've looked his way quite a bit so far in this game. Nice job there defensively, though, adjusting, because a couple of his earlier catches, he was wide open. Not that time. You mentioned the key word, adjustment. A better cover man on him now in space. Now whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. False start. Offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Every penalty so critical at this stage of the game is now they've got it third and long. Throwing again is Darnold. He's found his target. It's Anderson. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. second pick of the game instead it'll be second down and that's what he's got to be happy to have back there wasn't a hole open in the zone you have to think on early downs like that first down there need to be a little bit more careful yeah unfortunately for him got a couple more downs to play with after the incomplete pass here now is second and ten Again, Darnold. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden, it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying, no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. Now whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. False start. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. This third down just got even more difficult. Third down at 15 after the false start. Play action. It's Darnold. He's got curse. And down inside the 15 he goes. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. And it looks like this will be the last play before the two-minute warning. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. And on the ground they go with a running back. Oh, no, he lost the football. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Holding offense. 
That one whistled against a big right tackle. You think being able to fire out and block would be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty? But it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. They'll look to throw. The grab made by Curtis over the middle. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Now whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. False start. Offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Every penalty so critical at this stage of the game is now they've got it third and long. Here we go now. Green. He's back to throw. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll get it down this time in the 17. Well contained there defensively. The screen gets only a yard. And it's fourth. Back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this Browns defense stands tall. Well, certainly not the way that they were hoping that possession would end, failing to convert on four. And now they've got to make sure that they keep their poise, they keep their confidence. Just because it didn't work once doesn't mean if they get that same situation later that they shouldn't go for it again. The defense feels great, but the offense, they can't be despondent. Start the drive with high. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Now here's a timeout defensively. Defensive timeout called by the Jets. As they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Up, 
The Browns on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is third and four. as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. Taylor to a knee, and that ought to just about do it. Partner, they took a knee to finish this one off. To me, that's the only thing they lost in the fourth quarter. How about that comeback? Yeah, trailed coming into the last frame. Got it done, taking the knee. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Or are you I, one of those guys that's skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air boom, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound as we say so long from Cleveland.